Right then, welcome. I am Vicky Emerson, the Director of Learning and Development at Projecting Success and part of the Project Data Analytics community. I am thrilled to welcome you to another instalment of our wonderful AI adventure, a peek behind Adam Caddo's curtain. I was a bit mm, about the title, but you know, it's not really behind Adam's curtain, it's behind Chat GPT's curtain. Um, and we, the reason that Adam's on the call, he is our absolute in-house AI and gaming specialist, and he'll be able to give you a tour around ChatGPT and tell you some things that you maybe not don't already know and understand, start to understand the inner workings more of the wonderful ChatGPT. Give me some emojis if you're using ChatGPT every day. Fantastic. Fantastic. And for some, you may be completely new to ChatGPT, and that's absolutely fine. We are here for the AI adventures to go through natural language programming, models like ChatGPT. Uh, ChatGPT is extremely popular at the moment, so that's why we've chosen this topic. But without further ado, I will hand you over to Adam. But before I do, just please remember to scan that QR code if you want to hear about industry news and tech news. We are the place to be. Um, I'm currently looking at in, integrating Power BI, uh, ChatGPT, OpenAI with uh, Power BI, and we'll be doing hopefully a lunch and learn about that very soon. So without further ado, over to Adam. Yay, thank you so much, Vicky, and thank you for everyone to, uh, for coming along. There is an awful lot of you, which is very, very exciting. It's clearly a topic that people are interested in, so uh, hopefully, this will sort of whet your appetite for all things sort of chat GPT. So as Vicky said, there is a QR code there. Please do scan it if you want to have sort of up to date news uh, around this topic, as I'll get to rather shortly. This in, in general, AI is changing on a daily basis. Anytime we do anything on this topic, I have to research it on the evening before because otherwise I will miss out on interesting things to tell you it is changing by the day and if you don't want to have to trawl through everything why not sign up and then you get the nice bits sort of fed to you that way and don't have to do uh all of the all of the hard work which is which is always good bit of a breakdown on what we're going to cover today okay so I'll, I'll get cracking quite quickly because obviously we do not have long I'll give a little introduction to artificial intelligence uh just in general I'll talk about generative artificial intelligence, AI that generates things. I'll talk about understanding ChatGPT specifically. Obviously, that's the kind of main thing I'm going to be discussing. How does it work? How does it learn? That's what we want to know. I'm going to talk a little bit about something called its moderation uh, API, which I'll go into more detail on what that means at the time. Um, but that is a specific aspect of when ChatGPT doesn't give you responses for certain reasons. And it's interesting how that works. And sort of finally, to wrap up my section, at least, I'll talk a little bit about the future, how Jack Chat GPT is sort of developing, where it's changing going forwards. Though, even though that's sort of obviously where my topics end, we will then open up for questions probably for the last 15 minutes or so. Uh, and I will go through as many as I can within that time. Obviously, we're now just shy of 100 people which is amazing, but that does mean, depending on the questions, I'll try and ask the ones that are most popular and the most common. Um, but anything else, you may need to uh, <laughs> drop, us a, drop us a line afterwards and we'll see what we can sort. So, starting at the beginning, which is always a good place to begin, I'll talk a little bit about artificial intelligence and where does ChatGPT fall kind of within this, uh, this vast world of artificial intelligence? So, um, I'm going to start by talking about some stuff that has actually happened really, really recently in the world of AI. This is just treat this a little bit of a, something to whet your appetite in why obviously all of these things are becoming so, so important. I have also put the, that um, QR code up on the top of the screen once again from the intro. So again, if you do want to stay up to date with this stuff and not just rely on me telling you about it, please do follow that QR code, scan it and you can get there. So some things that have happened, all of these I believe have been within the last two to three days. Some were literally yesterday. One of those being 
Google's latest announcement of something called Google DeepMind. So it might not be a surprise to you, considering you are all here, that ChatGPT is somewhat of a hit. It's pretty popular and it's kind of begun making some waves. And obviously other tech companies who aren't necessarily affiliated with ChatGPT are somewhat jealous. And they're obviously, this is becoming sort of a little bit like a AI arms race. Now, Google's already sort of had uh, some attempts on this before, and they've been rubbish uh, is probably the best way of putting it, or at least they have had some very, very big issues that chat GPT simply doesn't have. So people looked at it, saw that it wasn't quite as good, and it instantly sort of um, got swept under the rug. They've just sort of announced, I guess, a, a probably a version two, really. But uh, they've they've combined with another company um, who've been working on this since about 2010, um, which it was already called DeepMind. I think now it's called Google DeepMind. Um, that's going to try and challenge. And if you read through their mission statement, everything like that, it's just trying to do what ChatGPT is already doing. But it's interesting that these are going to start cropping up. There are going to be alternatives, and we'll see which ones, obviously. Um, Sort of develop are there going to be any major differences between them we will see but we're still in sort of this really early stage at this point in this style of ai so it's very interesting something that's a little bit different is um there was a bit of controversy the other day uh because we had as i'm sure you're all aware the sony world photography awards i mean who doesn't subscribe to that on a daily basis but the winner of this photography competition actually had to come out and say sorry i cheated this was generated through ai and obviously that left the judging panel with somewhat egg on their faces and he actually did turn down the award but it's still very very interesting that we're getting to the point now where obviously world recognized image <laughs> competitions are being won by artificial intelligence um and obviously raises a whole bunch of ethical questions in that regard but very very interesting please do look it up it's a kind of crazy story uh, that is the image by the way uh, that won the competition um really really big this was literally announced yesterday the uk government has a new artificial intelligence task force they've essentially announced a whole bunch of things that they're going to be working on within artificial intelligence such as potentially looking at sort of putting restrictions and laws in place that directly relate to artificial intelligence because at the moment it is a little bit of a free reign no one really knows where certain things lie within legal bounds they're looking at that they're looking at putting money into um specific industries to help them input artificial intelligence in and that is obviously only going to happen with people like yourselves who are trying to learn this stuff and trying to adapt to what is coming um but it's really, really uh, exciting that obviously from a governmental level, they are looking at it and saying, right, yeah, this is something big. It's happening. We need to adapt. So still very early stages once again, but really important. Last thing, Meta AI. So this is once again, it's very similar to the first one I mentioned. This is sort of the Facebook. Oh, sorry, Meta is now Facebook. Meta sort of owns all of it. Um, but Meta is uh trying to revamp their own attempt very very similar to what happened with google they released their own sort of chat bot um i think it was quite a while ago now and again it made some absolute blunders telling people the names of planets wrong really basic maths incorrect it could also do some amazing stuff let's let's not get that that wrong but again it's it was just too unreliable they are also revamping their efforts and there's been some big developments uh, happening with the meta AI because everyone is trying to rush to get ahead of the chat GPT curve. So, again, all of that within the last two or three days, which don't get me wrong, it's a nightmare for me because I have to do so much reading to make sure that I'm not falling behind all the time. But all you guys need to do is scan that QR code and then you can just read our uh, what we find in the best bits, which is really, really useful. So. That was sort of my my sort of background for what AI is doing in the world right now. Starting to limit our focus slightly to more towards ChatGPT, 
This is a diagram that might be familiar to you if you've been to our other sort of uh, lunch and learns. This is something that has been mentioned before, but it's just important to kind of make sure we all understand these key themes. So artificial intelligence is actually a very big, wide sort of term. Machine learning is a slightly smaller circle within that. And inside that one is this little circle in the center, which is something called deep learning. And that's where chat GPT lives. It's all about its ability to learn or be trained to do certain things. So artificial intelligence is, is some sort of software or script that can sense reason, act or adapt. Um, machine learning, the one inside that, that's algorithms that try and improve as they're exposed to more data or sort of more tests over time. And then finally, that deep learning, that sort of subset of machine learning is this neural network. This is what ChatGPT is. Now, neural network sounds obviously very, very complex. Trying to break it down, once again, if you have been to our previous ones, you'll be familiar with this diagram. This is a very, very basic sort of breakdown of what a neural network looks like. Now, to put this in the context of chat GPT, on the left, we have inputs such as when you go on chat GPT and ask it, um, I don't know, to, to write you a, an email that you are too lazy to write, because that's what a lot of chat GPT requests uh, actually are. Um, the hidden layers are all of the training and obviously all the times that's happened before everything, all of the logic happens in all these layers that all help determine then what the actual output is. It is on a very basic level trying to act like a human brain. You get an input, all your past experience and training links in, you do lots of different checks on it, and that helps decide what an output is. On a very basic level, that is what a neural network is, and that is what ChatGPT does to determine its decisions. Now, when it comes to producing an output, that is sort of what makes it slightly different from, from other types of AI, because it is a generative AI. Now, all a generative AI is that an AI that generates something for you. That's all it, it, it means. And again, I'm trying to break down some of these terms that get banded about quite a lot, and sometimes they are actually far more simple than you might think. So generative AI, it's just AI that produces some sort of content. Now, ChatGPT produces text at the moment. That's an important thing to say. But at the moment, it, it does just produce text. But um, you can also produce images and audio. So, for example, on the left, um, I, I put chatbots just like uh, ChatGPT is. The first one came around in 1966, was Eliza, which was it's generally deemed at least the first recognized chatbot. It's something that obviously as a species, we've been very interested in doing for a very long time. Uh, I think Eliza was some sort of therapy bot. Um, that was its idea, which is somewhat concerning, um, considering, but it's been going for a really, really long time. More recently, and I think this has kind of helped, um, obviously, with sort of boost the popularity of chat GPT, we've also seen um, sort of tools being able to produce images such as DALI, specifically DALI 2, which is a lot better. There's also things like Mid Journey that can produce images like the one you're looking at there um, with obviously just some prompts and descriptions. Um, for the most part, they are free, though occasionally they can be because of traffic, kind of impossible to access uh, free because um, they are just so popular at the moment. Um, but being able to produce AI images with just a few words, it's obviously rather, rather important. The last one I wanted to mention is audio, because this is something that I think is yet to kind of break into the general mainstream in the same way that ChatGPT has, or that uh, DALI and Midjourney have. But I discovered there's something uh, that Google have been working on, a Google research uh, called Music LM, which if you, just in the same way that you do with uh, DALI or Midjourney, you describe what piece of music you want, and it writes you writes it for you. And it works. Um, 
Vicky, you have your hand up. Is everything okay? Yes, I was just thinking about the music part. I saw an article maybe four weeks ago, David Guetta. He's pretty mm-hmm. popular. He'd uh, done exactly that with uh, Eminem. Mm-hmm. Um, and he generated some music through AI. It was really cool. I think he's on YouTube. I'll try and find the link before this closes if anyone's interested. Yes, but it's a real thing. I think that combined with the ability to sort of artificially uh, synthesize someone's specific voice is um, very, very popular. I do believe there is a group that is trying to synthesize Ariana Grande's voice into every song ever made. Um, I don't know why, but um, y- you can know, I guess, is is the power of these things. Um, so, yeah, that is what generative AI is. That's what all the fuss is about with those. And just I wanted to put that there just in case you hear people saying that chat GPT is a generative AI. All they're saying is that, yes, it's a, it's an AI that creates something. That's all there is to it. So. The kind of meat and bones of this. Talking about chat GPT itself. So. The fundamentals that we sort of need to understand is this is a AI chatbot. It was created by uh, OpenAI, and it uses natural language processing. So that means, obviously, you can speak to it or type out messages to it as if you were having a natural conversation. It can pass those and understand them as commands. I've also just put there, at the moment, there is a free version. At the moment. There is also a paid version, which is actually an upgrade. I'll talk about the difference between them shortly, which is currently £16 a month, uh, which is quite a lot. But um, something that I don't think everyone is aware of, OpenAI, who um, obviously now did create ChatGPT, were co-founded by uh, someone you might have heard of uh, called Elon Musk, um, somewhat of a famous man. Uh, His rocket did explode yesterday, so he's maybe not the happiest of people right now. Um, He did at least have a hand in creating OpenAI, but he did step back um, at least some years ago. So it's not necessarily understood how much input he would have had within the sort of GPT training and development, um, especially since he's had some spats involved um, with Twitter data and trying to train off Twitter data. but that's the, the just the kind of background of the point of ChatGPT is you obviously talk to it or type messages to it in English and it is meant to respond to you in English, trying to pretend it is a human being. That is the point. The way that actually works is that it was trained by humans. Humans essentially provided it with a bunch of conversations. So. One of them would type to another human, hello, I would like to write a professional email, please. And the other human would go, OK, and would write a professional email back. They'd then put that into the AI and say, hey, this is a good example. You try. And it would have what is known as a reward system. The closer it got to what they were looking for, they could reward the AI. This is essentially a form of training. Um, And over time, it was able to sort of decontextualize and be able to, you know, go from writing professional email to being able to turn general text into more professional and understand these differences in tones. Um, So, yeah, this is just kind of backing up what I just said. This idea of rewards is might seem a little strange. But it's almost like the AI is playing a game and it's gathering points. The more points it gets is for being more human. And once this has done it millions and millions and millions of times, it's going to get pretty good at it. And humans did still have a lot of hand in this, and they still do. Um, This is not maybe quite as automatic as you might think, and it still has had some fairly major hiccups which I will, again, sort of talk about shortly. Um, But this whole system of training AIs using rewards uh, is something called reinforcement learning. Now, um, what I have for you is a little video 
to explain reinforcement learning because it's not just used for um, chatbots. Uh, here, I have Albert. Albert is a cube. He is powered by, by AI. And if I want to try and get into the exit, he is going to do just do random things and he is timed for 10 seconds to leave. And over time, the closer he gets to doing things right, he is going to get rewards. For example, pushing the button that opens the door will give him some points. And slowly, over time, Albert is going to become more in quote unquote intelligent as he starts knowing, OK, I know that pressing the button in the middle of the room will open the door. So that's how I'm going to leave. If I skip onto the video, you can see he starts being able to do all kinds of complicated things, fancy jumps, all of this stuff. This is a obviously a more a, a visual way of representing what was happening with ChatGPT. So every time it was sending a professional email, maybe rather than saying hi or hello, it said dear sir slash madam, for example, it might get some points. Every time it swore at them, it's probably going to lose some points, things like that. Um, so that is the whole purpose of reinforcement learning. I always find that really interesting to kind of visualize because it's not quite as complex as you might think. That's not to diminish, obviously, the actual specifics of the training and going further into that, but the broad strokes of how the rewards work and the training of it is, is essentially just like Albert, training a box to jump through a door to create one of the most powerful AI tools ever seen, um, which is maybe a very simplistic analogy, but it is one that works. So, um, let me skip on to the next slide. So, it is important before kind of going any further into some of the specifics to talk about the different versions, because I'm going to start to have to say that certain things only apply to certain versions. There are two versions I will really be discussing, which is the free version, which I think is currently 3.5 ish. Not exactly sure which specific version is. It's it's running off the GPT-3 anyway. Then you have the new version which you can pay for, which is GPT-4. So versions three and four have some rather big differences. Um, so version four only launched last month. Um, and considering the, the sort of free version that everyone could access only launched in November, it has already improved dramatically. And that is because as its popularity has, has blown up, they can now use obviously the data that we give ChatGPT and the conversations we have to help train it further. It doesn't mean that every single time you use ChatGPT, it's going to immediately learn from it. It knows what to ignore quite well. So for example, people have tried to teach ChatGPT that two plus two equals five because people are cruel and like teasing robots, apparently. Very 1984. Um, so they've they've just repeatedly been saying, hey, ChatGPT, add two and two together. And it said four. And they've gone, no, you are wrong, ChatGPT. It's five. And it's gone. In the end, sometimes it goes, OK, you're right. Two plus two is five. And then if you return and say, ChatGPT, what's two plus two? It will say four again, because there are some fundamental facts it will ignore, and they will pick certain bits of training data. Um, and they've used all of that and also additional data sources here and there uh, to essentially improve it. Um, the first major improvement that you probably notice is that ChatGPT, Chat, bleh, Chat GPT for seriously, try saying Chat GPT as fast as I do every day, and it starts becoming just a, a blur. Um, it can accept images, and it, you can ask it questions about the images, and it can analyze and reply to them. The example that they actually give is a phone with sort of a really weird power cable inputted in it, and they ask it, what do you think is funny? And it's able to break down why it might be able to use, essentially be used as like a meme or a joke, and describes how the joke might be funny to certain people. That's crazy. That is insanely powerful. Though some of the things that you might not be aware of uh, is you can now drop documents or files or just copy and paste text. There's up to 25,000 words long. 
and it can analyze and respond to that. So you could drop someone's entire sort of thesis in there and say, improve it, make it more professional, cut out spelling mistakes. And generally, it will do a good job, generally. It's not perfect, but still. Um, so reasoning is something that, that they have improved. This is quite hard to quantify, but um, generally the way that ChatGPT4 responds is more concise to the point. And you might have noticed this if you've used ChatGPT a little bit yourself. If you say, for example, um, what was the example I gave yesterday? Uh, name me top five tips to do a, a job interview. Chat GPT 4 will probably just say one, two, three, four, and five uh, and give you the five things you want. GPT 3 is more likely to say, okay, right, well, here are the five top tips that you asked for. And it might have some additional words here that are a little bit fluffy and sort of pad things out. Chat GPT 4 is meant to be a bit clearer and on the money with these things, unless you ask it not to. Um, something that is better is its moderation. In fact, it's 82% safer. The next chapter is all talking about what the moderation actually is, but to briefly summarize, it's 82% less likely to tell you about something that it shouldn't, um, which is obviously much nicer for security, for safety, confidentiality, um, and also legal things as, as well. Finally, just a general thing on accuracy. Now, um, yesterday we had a big, long uh, discussion um, about whether or not anyone in the office had actually ever encountered chat GPT giving them false information. And generally the answer was not really, but that's also the problem. Because for me using it, I know it's not 100% accurate, but everything it's ever given me has been fine. So if someone who doesn't really read that much about it, you ask it a couple of things, you might just think that it is the gospel truth. And you then might ask it something subjective or it gets a little bit muddled, which it will do from time to time, and it will tell them something incorrect. Now, the new one is 40% more accurate, supposedly. Um, and they do also test it by actually making it take lots of exams. Um, and it can pass very high level uh, exams itself, sort of acting like a human looking them up. But it is still a little bit questionable on the odd thing. Um, one big thing to note is one of the main limiting factors that people had with GPT-3 and 3.5 is that its knowledge base stopped in, I think it's September 21. Um, it's somewhere near the end of 21 anyway. Um, ChatGPT-4 has some plugins that you can sort of add, which again, we'll touch on later, that allows it to get live data, but that is still a little limited and for the most part, it has still mostly been trained on data from 2021. So if you're asking it about recent stuff, that is where probably a lot of the areas are coming from. So speaking of things that can get wrong, wanted to talk a little bit about what ChatGPT is trained not to give you. I say trained not to give you rather than won't give you because occasionally it does still tell you these things. Um, and people have been, well, if you give people a powerful tool, they will try and find out ways to be sneaky and uh, less than honest with it, unfortunately. And people have found ways of trying to negate this sort of moderation that's been done. But just so you're aware, the things that you cannot ask ChatGPT for, sports predictions, I think, and I, I couldn't get this on an official line, but I assume that is for anti-gambling reasons they they give a slightly different reason if you try and ask but i think that is the real reason that that's going on you cannot ask it for opinions or facts about specific partisan political issues so for example in america one of the biggest things would be uh, the right to bear arms to have firearms you can't necessarily ask it for what is right and it will say, hey, don't bring me into this. Uh, essentially, it doesn't want to get involved with things that could be um, subjective. Um, for the most part, with the exception of plugins and some of the stuff going on in the future, it can't get 
live data. So by default, you can't say, hey, what's the weather in my area? Because it, it doesn't have this direct link, it hasn't been trained with that data. But that is what is changing. It's going to move towards being able to do that. Um, you can't ask it for some financial advice. Again, this is more for things like stock trading. It will not analyze the stock market for you and tell you, oh, yeah, you should put money on this and put money on that. Because, again, if it all goes wrong for you, you might be quite angry with it. Um, so it just dodges that bullet, says that you can't. Um, obviously, some of these are going to be really obvious. You can't get it to obviously say anything hateful, anything discriminatory. You can't ask it for any violence based things. Um, it will not swear to you. You cannot access any age related uh, material, anything for adults specifically. What is interesting is you shouldn't be able to ask it for confidential information. Now, I will say this now. Whatever you put into ChatGPT, you should be comfortable that it might learn from that information. Now, unfortunately, some people did provide some confidential information to ChatGPT and someone asked for it and ChatGPT did give it to them. So it would be, uh, and it shouldn't do that, but it will occasionally get things wrong and it just spat out someone's financial information to someone else because they'd decided to give ChatGPT all their debit like debit card information please don't do that if that's the one thing you take away from today that that would be my number one tip uh vicky yes and i think as you get into this if you're training your own models uh in open ai i trained my models mally to uh, so mally has some information about uh, you know where i live uh, not my card details but different bits of information and mally's um typical response is if anyone asks him He's not allowed to talk to strangers. So that's his typical response. And he has been tested and he won't give any of his address details out to strangers, which is quite interesting. But you do need to train them. Um, and in chat GPT, it's a more risque area. Yes, absolutely. Um, what else do we have? Yes, you, you also can't ask it for advice to, on how to do crime. Uh, again, self-explanatory. Um, what is quite interesting, and this is obviously where they're going to be working really hard, is that it, they don't want to be able to, they don't want it to become essentially an outlet for just false information. So if you ask it about things that it believes are conspiracies or fake news, it will not respond. And finally, it won't respond to gibberish and nonsense. Just in general, if it can't understand you, it won't give you a response. Um, so the whole point of me talking about those is that this moderation has sometimes failed. And again, it's why ChatGPT4 has seen an 82% increase in its safety, because it is something that they are specifically working on. There you go, 82% less. And for reference, some of the specific examples have been, um, yeah, the financial information leaked. And there was one very specific one where someone found a way of asking chat gpt to write it a story on a topic that was banned and chat gpt went oh well i can write stories about crime and so wrote them a story on how to do something criminal um which obviously just gave them the information that they were looking for and now sort of bypassed the moderation api so they've had to be quite clever because obviously people are trying to be clever and getting around these issues um so so last few minutes before some questions just going to be on the future and the main thing that we're looking at right now as as of kind of the past couple of weeks have been plugins so the idea is that you can take chat gpt and its sort of its functionality and its use and you can plug that in to your website that you run or your software that you use and it will be able to sort of then do some really cool things so if you plug it into your weather app for example it, you could then get live weather data because it can access that data and you can train it with the specific things within your website or or app for example you can also then merge essentially chat gpt in with your own programming to do some really really cool things and i've just put here automatic actions now this 
scares me and does scare quite a lot of people. But the idea with this plugin is that you will be able to say, hey, ChatGPT, I want to go on holiday. Find me the cheapest flight to Spain in the next two days and book it. And it will go get your information that you've saved on whatever app this is plugged in. So your payments, the details um, will go to a website, search through, find it, look it up, book it for you, pay for it for you and then send you all of the information. Now, the idea is obviously by having this as a plugin, all of your payment things will then be secure within the app and it can kind of request it that way. But it is obviously a quite a scary thing to see because there is lots of scope for this to go wrong, especially when you're dealing with financial stuff. And what if there's any misunderstanding and chat GPT spends all your money on flights to Spain? Um, you know, or if what if someone hacks your phone and then can use chat GPT to spend loads of money? It's it's an it's a really odd one. Um, the plugins that are kind of coming up at the moment or general integration that's coming up at the moment, some interesting ones I thought I would mention is to kind of give you the, the concrete example I was talking about is Expedia. So holidays, um, that's not just the booking side. It's also for searching. So you could ask it, um, you'll, you'll log into Expedia's website and instead of, you know, going through little menus to find everything, you'll just talk to it like you talk to Jack GPT and say, hey, I want a holiday somewhere hot within in this price range, something like that, yada, yada, yada. And it will be able to sort all the stuff for you and give you a really nice customized breakdown because it'll be able to access all of the Expedia data because they have this plugin. Um, open table. If you've ever used open table, it's like a um it's a table booking thing for restaurants and food places. So you'll be able to do that nice and easily. And you know, you could maybe link with friends to do it. That would be the really useful thing. What I really am interested in is Duolingo has already integrated Chat GPT, so it can use AI to help you obviously learn languages in different in different ways, which is really, really nifty. Um, so it can generate new exercises. It can better identify where you are weaker and can maybe help them sort of restructure their curriculum based off uh, data because it's all doing lots of analysis and things in the background. The biggest one, and I'd be remiss for not including it, it's probably going to be mentioned every time someone opens their mouth about ChatGPT at the moment, is Copilot because it's going to be one of the biggest revolutions, assuming you know it, it doesn't go complete, completely wrong. This is ChatGPT, if you're not aware, being implemented into Microsoft Office. So when you used to have that little paperclip in the corner of Word, if you're of a certain age, this will, this will have been, well, this was my childhood, um, you could ask it, obviously, you know, it would say, hey, do you need any help with anything? Now, ChatGPT is going to be popping up and saying, oh, hey, I see that you're trying to write a letter. I think maybe these specific elements are a little bit too informal. Would you like me to restructure it for you and spell check it and then email it to whoever you want? It's going to be fairly incredible, especially as, you know, step one is Word and PowerPoint and Excel. But then you're going to move on into automatic integration into all the other software. So if all of my data people are here, your Power BI, your Power Apps, your Power Automate, being able to do lots of fancy things just by telling it. Anyone here who mentioned, because we did have a few of them, software engineers, I'm sure you're aware that you can get it to write code for you. And ChatGPT4 in particular has seen a massive increase in its ability to write code from scratch that doesn't even need any tweaking. You can just drag it and drop it. Um, so for me, I know Vicky mentioned this in the beginning, I have a background in games development. You can take stuff and throw it into Unity to create 3D games immediately. It can write Python for you. It's, while not brilliant, it can also write stuff in just foreign languages. Um, I have only tested that to a certain degree because I only speak English, which is somewhat limiting on my ability to, to judge um, whether it writes French very well, but it, it, it tries. Uh, I assume that is going to be something that they are focusing on quite heavily because at the moment it's only going to be um, hitting obviously uh, certain markets. So um, if you want to know more, well look, I've got loads of places that you can find out more. So again, if you want to just contact me um, individually, I'll put my uh, email in the chat actually as well. Liam's also put his name in the chat 
uh, his, his name, I think his name's William, his email in the chat if you sort of want to contact him about any of the events that we do, any of the training we do, if you just have sort of a, a general uh, question about anything that I've talked about today, you can contact me on my email there. Contact me on LinkedIn and also all of our wonderful communities. So it's not just us, there's loads of other people in there. People who obviously think about all this stuff. And they want to know and share ideas in the same way. And one final little plug uh, for obviously the, the training that we do. Here we have our lovely data analyst badges that we do on our course um, that cover all of the different um, sort of aspects of of uh, data analysis. So things as understanding data, visualizing data, doing machine learning, creating your own chatbots and things, understanding obviously the fundamentals of how that stuff works, programming, um, but presenting, understanding the user experience when interacting with these tools. There's loads and loads of stuff. Um, so again, if that's your jam, uh, please do uh, reach out. Okay, uh, I'll, well, I'll the that's that's enough of me waffling on i am sure so i will i will pass over to to vicky to obviously finish things up for today and don't forget to add me if you don't oh, like the yes. look of this lot you can just add me and you'll still get the same results it's fine so if you don't like the book add me it's fine <laughs> thank you so much for everyone for coming today um keep an eye out for the next one what is the next one are we doing women in tech Oh, we're doing data visualization and AI. So data visualization and um, immersed in chat GPT. So that'll be super exciting for you data visualization extraordinaires out there. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the emojis. It's great to see you all again. I know we've got some familiar faces.